Hey guys, welcome back to the Watches and Giggles channel. I'm Chris from Chicago. First off, as always, everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I do appreciate it. All right, everyone, in today's vid, we're going to be discussing the new releases from Rolex and Tudor. What are my thoughts? I'll be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. We're going to dive into all of it. But before we do, we'll see what I'm wearing. And today I have on my Tudor GMT. I picked this watch in particular today because I think one release from Tudor stole the show. And that's where we're going to start, guys. Tudor. Tudor did some pretty interesting releases today. And we're going to start off with the bad, in my opinion. They released, I think they were trying to capitalize on the Rolex Hulk being discontinued, but they released a green bezel, green dial watch, which would have been great, probably in all steel, but they did a solid gold version, not on a bracelet, can only buy it on, well, I believe it actually comes with both straps, a leather and a NATO, for the bargain price of $16,800. Dollars Now, for a solid gold watch, uh, that's not that bad. I don't believe it's rolled. The case is rolled. I do believe it's solid gold. And for that price, it better be. I just don't know how I feel about that, especially no option on a bracelet, uh, just leather and a NATO. And for $16,800, wow. I do want to see it in person before making my final judgment. But for most of us looking to spend that type of money, I don't think we're going to buy a solid gold watch. Tudor. I'll be interested to see gray market and aftermarket prices for that for that watch. I'm sure initially it'll probably be hot. It may go for a premium, but I just don't know. Now, hopefully, Tudor is setting up this watch, you know, like Rolex does. They'll release a precious metal and then a steel version down the road. I'm hoping Tudor is going to do the same thing and they release a steel version of this watch, you know, the Black Bay 58 case. That would be awesome. So, all right, moving along. Next, they released a sterling silver case with a taupe bezel and a taupe dial, uh, which Tudor is uh, commenting on that it's very chic and classy. I think Lady Gaga was, uh, uh, Tudor sent one over to her and she was wearing one. Again, it doesn't come on a bracelet. It comes, I believe, on a strap and a NATO or just a NATO. I believe it's a strap and a NATO. Uh, price isn't too bad. I believe around 4300 And again, we're talking American dollars, guys. But I'm not sure how that'll age the case and exactly if it's mixed, if it's solid sterling silver, which I'm pretty sure it's not. But I don't know. I didn't deep dive into the exact metals uh, that they use, but they're saying it's a silver case. Uh, I want to see it in person. I think the taupe is kind of cool and the price point's right on. I think it'll probably be a hit. Um, you know, we'll see. The market will dictate, right? So I'll be curious to uh, hear and uh, read what you guys think about that. But the next release, I think, is the one that stole the show from Rolex even. And that is the new Tudor chronograph. In 41 millimeters, They, it's not as high anymore. The height is, I believe, 14.4 down from around, I think it was over 15 actually. And then the Panda and the Reverse Panda, guys. Really, really cool. Now, for me personally, I don't like the two subdials. I like three subdials on my chronograph. But besides that, I think it's going to be a home run, especially with the price point of 5250 For everyone wanting a Daytona Panda and us mere mortals cannot buy one, oh my gosh, I looked today there. The Panda is fast approaching almost $40,000. And the black dial is about 37 for unworn. Unbelievable. So yeah, you can now go into your Tudor authorized dealer and buy one of these bad boys. I'm assuming they're going to be hard to find, you know, initially. But just like this guy, he was hard to find in 2018. But now you can you can go and buy one easily and you can get one used for about 34, 3500 in great condition. So yeah, initially they're going to be hot. You may not be able to get one, but you'll be able to get one eventually. And they'll probably come down in price. So uh, well done, Tudor. I think it's awesome. I can't wait to see it in the flesh. I don't think it's going to be for me as the two sub dials kind of like uh, they look like two eyes staring back at me is kind of how I feel. But I think it's a great watch and a lot of people are going to love it. So Tudor, well done. I think that's a home run. Now we will move on to Rolex, everyone. And we will start off with the bad. 
And for me, the bad was the Explorer 2. It is the 50th anniversary Rolex, and you basically decided to do nothing. I know I'm not the only one that feels this way. Some other YouTubers made some videos, and uh, we're not happy, and I'm not happy either. You had every chance in the world to release a cool 50th anniversary Explorer 2, and the only thing you did is update the movement to a 70-hour power reserve. I believe you thinned out the lugs, and I'm not sure, but I think the bracelet is 22 millimeters now. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I, the bracelet looks bigger to me. Uh, but besides that, let's see. Also, uh, you got rid of the floating hands, so no floating hands on the black dial. Uh, and also, what is it? On I think the material on the polar, now on the indices and on the hour markers and the hands is more of a matte finish instead of like... Uh, a shiny black finish, but really, essentially, it's the same watch. I'm, I'm reaching here to try to help Rolex out, but essentially, they did nothing uh, to the Explorer 2 except update the movement, maybe thin the case out, possibly make the bracelet a little bigger, and put the crown, obviously, at the 6 o'clock position to indicate that movement update. But, uh, yeah, not happy. That's a lazy release, in my opinion. We'll see if Rolex actually releases more watches down the road for 2021. Uh, but as of right now, disappointed in the Explorer 2. Now we'll move along to two guys that I actually have that we can talk about. And first we'll start off with the Bruce Wayne or the Batgirl, but I'm calling it the Bruce Wayne. So Rolex decided to give everyone that owns the original Batman a kick in the huevos. The cojones, the butt, uh, kind of a little slap to the face. Now the original Batman had some significance. It was the first time Rolex was able to put two colors on one bezel. So I don't think, guys, for everyone that's really worried that now uh, this comes on an Oyster as well, you can buy it on an Oyster or a Jubilee, I don't think the original Batman is going to tank in price. Initially, the market may have a reaction, uh, and it may go down a little bit, but it is the first time Rolex was able to put two colors on one bezel. So it'll always have that significance. But uh, it was kind of a kick to the flippers as prices will probably initially come down a little bit. Also, the Pepsi you can buy on an Oyster or Jubilee. You know, I think that's cool. Good luck. Good luck being able to buy one. I heard recently that Rolex only has four people that can make that bezel, which is one of the reasons why it's so hard to get. But for us mere mortals, those Pepsis, you know, I've heard they're as, almost as hard to get as a Daytona. They don't command the same price on the aftermarket or gray market, but they're very hard to get. Very hard to get. I know a lot of VIPs uh, that haven't been able to get one and are still waiting. So uh, very, very interesting on that. So uh, moving right along. Also, the Sky Dweller guys now comes on a Jubilee and an Oyster, you know, for the two-tone and all the other variants. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, again, I'll never be able to buy one from an AD, maybe a two-tone, but I think that's cool. I think it does look pretty good on the Jubilee. So yeah, I, I, do, I do like that. I think that's pretty cool. Now we'll get into the discontinued model, which there wasn't very many models discontinued, but this guy is out the window. I did predict that it would get discontinued. I was worried uh, that Rolex would up it to a 41 or 40. They did not. Uh, they actually did something I predicted when the 41 millimeter sub come out. I actually predicted that this watch would go down to 36 millimeters, and that's exactly uh, what Rolex did. So they discontinued the 39, and they introduced a 36 millimeter Explorer, which I think is a classic, classic watch. For myself, I won't be able to wear it uh, because I have a huge wrist of 7.5 inches, so 36 millimeters Will look very tiny on me, but I think a lot of people will be happy with it. It'll probably be split uh, with the watch enthusiasts and our community for people that like it and people that don't. I'm for one very happy uh, that I was able to get this 39 just in November, just in the nick of time there, 2020 November, and I'm very happy with it. It's my daily watch. I love it. Uh, will prices go up on this watch? Yeah, they probably will. How high? I don't know. You know, I would say it'll top out around twelve or 13000 I would think, for really, really good conditions, like a 2020 like this or a 21, the very tail end. I don't think they're going to get fifteen, sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000. So I think you'll still be able to find, 
you know, a little older ones, 17, 2018, you know, probably for around nine or 10,000, which is not that bad. Now the new one, 36 millimeter, uh, you know, they put in a new movement. Oh God, what is it? 3220, I think it is. God, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, they got the crown down there. They also, from the Explorer, now moved, got moved back up to the top. And it looks like a beautiful, beautiful watch and also comes in at a great, great, great price point of $6,450. Uh, how much will it command on the gray market? I would say not much. Uh, Explorer's never commanded that big of a premium. I would say they go for around eight or nine, maybe 10 at the most initially. But that brings us to another bad, in my opinion. They released a two-tone Explorer, which I personally believe it goes against uh, what that watch is all about, climbing Everest and and whatnot and exploring. Uh, are you really going to do that in a two-tone 36 millimeter watch? I think this watch is more release, uh, in my opinion, for the Asian market and for the ladies. I think some ladies will really like it, uh, but it doesn't do it for me. I'm sure some people will like it. Again, uh, I'll wait to see see it in the flesh before I make my final decision. But as of right now, especially at the price point of uh, 10800 uh, you know, it's it's a little pricey for what it is, in my opinion, uh, but we'll see what it commands uh, in the aftermarket and gray market, guys. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much everything I wanted to highlight here, guys. Uh, really enjoyed the releases. I think Tudor, again, stole the show with the chronograph, with the Panda and reverse Panda. I think people are going to love those. And for everyone wanting a Daytona, you know, there you go. You can get one of those for five thousand dollars and if you wait a year or two you'll probably be able to get one for four you know forty five hundred but that's going to do it for today guys i hope everyone's doing well i hope everyone's healthy i hope everyone's safe and i'll talk to you guys next time take care